Hi, thanks for joining me again here at Lisa Gollum Art. Um, and I have such a great time doing these tutorials for you and I'm just so happy that you're joining me. Today my drink of choice is Pinot Grigio. I don't know if that's how you say it because I'm not really, you know, a connoisseur of wine. I just like it. So it's all good. Cheers. So here's the painting we are going to be doing today. And the, the truth of the matter is my husband and I had a few days off last week, so we went sailing. I had actually never been sailing and I'm in my 50s, so it was time that I went for a sail ride. So sailboat ride, is it a ride, I guess? Sail cruise, something like that. Anyway, it was glorious on Lake Erie and we just had a blast. And I thought, you know, why not paint a sailboat? And um, I'm partial to sunsets. I don't know if you've noticed that yet, but I just really like this one as a kaleidoscope kind of, of all the different colors. I want you to know though that this, if you're painting along with me, please do it your way. You don't have to do it exactly these colors. Just have fun with it and make it your own. You'll notice that there is a link for Amazon uh, in, in the description of this video. If you're, you're watching this on YouTube, that is. And um, that just will help you to buy some supplies. If you want to get a little bit of a better deal, you can buy some things at the dollar store or at Walmart. Um, and they're perfectly fine, especially if you're learning. You don't have to go all out and buy a million things. Um, just give it a try with whatever supplies you have. That's awesome. Probably the most economical way to buy canvases is to go to Michael's and to buy their five packs of, of um, great value, I think it's called, canvases. Um, that's usually what I use for tutorials and for other things. They're very good for the price. You pay $17 for five canvases, which is actually really, 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 really good. So that's probably the easiest way to get 16 by 20. And sometimes beginners will think they need a smaller canvas. Actually, it's harder to paint well on a small canvas. I've always found because the details are smaller and you need smaller brushes and you need more control with your hands. So the main thing of art is just to express yourself, to be yourself not to expect the world and not to have this perfectionistic attitude, but just to be able to let go. And if you can kill that negative Nancy voice in your head that keeps saying, oh, you can't do this, you're not good enough, I love it. If you can kill that lady, it's the only lady I would ever tell you to kill, but that one, she should die. Um, just tell her to shut up. I want this to be PG. Just tell her to shut up. <laughs> um, you're gonna, keep painting and the more you paint the, the, the better and the easier it gets and take it from me um, I, I've been painting for a long time and I never think it's good enough I never think it's perfect and I always have to fight against that thought so I just wanted to say that real quick at the beginning of this tutorial that never be so hard on yourself always just have a good time because life is too short just gotta let go and be free and enjoy all of the things life has to offer so anyway, we, on that note, we are going to go through the tutorial um, and I have decided to film it a little different. This time I thought I just filmed the painting from above. As it plays, I'm just going to do a commentary. So I could be like a sports commentary person, um, just letting you know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, that kind of thing. And it's right beside me here playing. So, um, you know, it's all good. Uh, we're going to try it and I'm going to see if I like it doing it this way. Anyway, cheers, and we are going to get started watching our video. Mm, I love wine. <laughs> okay. So first you'll notice I use a, a palette booklet and always have a napkin and of course your paintbrushes. I had just various types of, of flat ones and round ones. We have black and white paint for today and we also have magenta and blue and yellow. Okay, so I'm filling up my palette with these glorious colors that will help you create this wonderful sunset painting. Oh, 
Okay, so we have yellow, white, and black on our palette. There's no rhyme or reason to how I put things on a palette. I just put them on there. Beautiful. I was drinking coffee when I painted the painting. <laughs> drinking wine now that I'm teaching it. <laughs> so we really loaded that, blue, that brush with some blue. Not a lot of water in with the paint, so it takes a little while to kind of cover the canvas. But you don't want a lot of water in paint because it doesn't adhere well to the canvas. Nice, long, what I call arm strokes, horizontal strokes, side to side. Now, without washing the brush, put some magenta in there, which will create some purples. And they mix really well. The skies are so much fun. They're really like abstract art. You really can't do them wrong. Um, I'm adding white because I want to brighten. You notice like I don't, I could have mixed purple and light purple and light blue on my palette, but sometimes I just mix the colors together as I paint them on the canvas. Hmm. Oh, I'm going so fast. <laughs> it looks like, because I've sped the video up double the speed. And I'm adding magenta up into the top of the blue just to get continuity um, in the sky so it's not stripe of blue, stripe of purple. Of course, as you see from the finished product, it never ends up that way anyways. All right, so I did some pinks now. I actually remember I added, I actually did mix a pink because I was feeling like everything was still a little too dark. So doesn't that look like I'm having fun? Just painting away. Well, that's the whole point. Oh, now we broke out the cadmium red, which I decided later to do because I, I wanted it more sunsetty and red and pink. You can kind of mix them together. One's, it's kind of an orangey red, but I wanted to pull into the oranges. But there's still some cohesion because red is in pink, so it kind of stays cohesive, but oranges things up a little bit. Cadmium red, I always found, isn't really a red to me. It's more of a reddish orange than a pure red to me. Yeah, then I mix some orange going downwards. We're about to, uh, almost two thirds of the way down the canvas now. I feel like a commentator. Okay, and now she takes the big, uh, the big Papa Bear brush and she's adding, she's adding yellow right on top. I'm, I don't have a good announcer voice. All right, so I added a little bit of peach and now I'm just deciding where I want my horizon line. And I'm using a ruler and cad red or cadmium red to kind of just mark that. You could really mark it with, with paint as well or any whatever color you're using. Like I said, you could use your own colors. You could like not do the pinks, or the reds and oranges. You could just stick with pinks and that would be good too. Now again, about cohesion, I'm putting reds up higher in the sky, cad, red, cadmium reds, so that there's not like stripes. You never want just to see a stripe of this color, stripe of that color, because really it kind of is when you start, like an ombre, sort of this color, that, but then you got to blend them and then you got to kind of put them here and there so that it's just like looks a little bit more haphazard, haphazard or However that word is pronounced, is it haphazard or haphazard? Random. <laughs> that one I know how to pronounce, even if I have had wine. All right, so now I'm adding pure yellow, just in some places to create some drama, uh, and some cloud-ish formations. This painting doesn't have like clouds per se, just kind of lots of colors in the sky. I always like it the best once I add the yellows. And now I'm adding a little more light yellow, so I kind of mixed a little bit of white into the yellow. So one thing I did want to say, and I didn't think to say it earlier, is the purple is kind of, the purple that we created with that magenta is kind of the bridge between the blue and the yellow. Because with blue and yellow, they make green. And green looks weird in skies. 
So I never go straight from blue to yellow for a sunset. Good to know. In the overlapping, whether you're overlapping yellow with blue or you're mixing them together, it doesn't matter, you're gonna get green. Now you can see I'm doing the sun. And again, you don't, you could use a lid for a half circle form if you really are insecure about getting your half circle perfect. But you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> it's all good. So I just used yellow and then a little bit of uh, whitish yellow. Now I'm just adding a little bit of extra blue in the sky. Again, just for continuity, I was looking at it and the blue was so much blue on top, but not much blue further down. So I wanted to add a little blue. I was trying not to, trying to avoid the yellow areas. Again, just because I didn't want green in the sky. I did use a little bit of a blending brush or I call it my puffy brush. So that's how I'm getting the nice blends. If you don't have one of those, just any brush will do. I just go all the way from one edge to the next to create those that smooth blend that we all want so much. So now it's time to do it like a zigzaggy yellow reflection in the water below the sun. And it's more detailed and smaller uh, near the sun, but then it gets kind of bigger as it moves down. Just so you know, water, it has to be kind of horizontal strokes or um, level strokes if you can doesn't have to be perfect but water tends to create reflections that create horizontal lines if you did a line like this in the water it would look weird you just have to trust me on that so you want to kind of get your arm involved and just kind of free just and usually the faster you go the straighter the straighter your line will be if you try and you know go really careful sometimes it actually backfires so the moral of the story is let go. <laughs> All right. So now you're seeing me adding some blues. And the water doesn't matter so much if there's green. In fact, a lot of water there it has a lot of deeper greens. So um, I don't worry so much about yellow and blue mixing when I'm doing water. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but when I created the reflections, I didn't make it straight down. I kind of zigged and zagged, and then zigged again, and then zagged again. It creates a little bit more of a, a natural flow of the light and the reflection in the water. Now we're adding a little purple to the water because there's purple in the sky. Another lesson, really cheap for you here today, free on YouTube. Whatever colors you used in the sky, you always again use in the water because light always reflects. So the colors in the sky will reflect on the water to some degree or another. So now because of that, I'm also adding some cadmium red. By the way, if you don't have cadmium red, that's okay. Any red you have is, is great. But if it's a little on the pinky side, you can always put a little yellow in it to, to make it a little more of a cad red. So that we call it cad red, short form in arts in art speak. Um, just because then it creates more oranges, which is more sunsetty colors. Pinks are also sunsetty colors, and so we're adding some magenta. And again, because it's also in the sky. So like I said, every color in the, in the sky will end up in the water somewhere. I'm doing the hand thing because I'm happy. It's like a happy hand dance because you can't see me. So I was like, okay, I can just dance with my hands. <laughs> I know I'm silly. It's okay. I'm aware. <gasps> the big blow dryer is coming out. 
sometimes you get a lot of different colors on something and there's a lot of layers and it's starting to build up and it's wet and then everything you add will mix as long as the colors the paint is still wet once the paint's dry you can start layering on top and it won't mix in with the colors below and so think for things like highlights in the water and such you kind of want it a little drier so that's why um, and so the reason I'm adding white here, um, I know it might look a little weird, but I wanted more orange. It was like looking sort of purpley and reddish, but it didn't, wasn't getting a lot of orange. And you can't really put a lighter orange on top of a cad red and, and other things because it just wouldn't pop. White is a really good transition color. Of course it mixes a bit with the paint that's there because it's not hundred percent dry, but it, Lightens I, again the the water. I don't want the water so dark that there's no light in it. So sometimes I will use white to whiten everything a little bit, and then I can go back in with some extra colors. And I'm also drying that white, so it's it becomes an underlayer of white, whitish, pinkish, orangish, peachish, yellowish, white. Lots of whites. They're not. It's not because it's not really white. <laughs> Okay, now I can put some oranges on the water and they're going to pop. If I just had tried to paint orange on top of the cadmium red, it would not have popped. It would have just kind of looked like a little bit slightly orangey or red. But this way, now you can see it looks a little more like the sky. My kitty came to visit, so he's going to say hi. This is Slink. Slink is a bit of a, hi honey, Slink's a bit of a scaredy cat. So we called him Slink in the beginning because he kind of slunk around the house like something was going to attack him at any minute. So that was, I'm glad you met Slink. See, if I was down in my studio, you wouldn't have never met him because, oh, well, he's not really allowed in my studio. All right. So, um, there we go. Now I'm adding the blues because I'm looking at the sky all the time. I'm kind of standing back and looking. Needs more blues in the bottom, needed more oranges in the upper portion of the water or the farthest away portion to kind of make it look, make sense with the sky and the reflections in the sky. Ah, now I'm switching to Mama Bear, the round brush. And I cleaned her really well and wiped her on the paper towel to add a little more whites now into the sun because the sun's often, when the sun's setting on a lake, the, the, it looks almost pure white sometimes. It doesn't really look yellow like when you, when you paint it in kindergarten. It actually has more of a white glow than a yellow shine. But you know, I had it yellow too, so what are you gonna do? You'll notice too when I paint, like I'm not a trained painter. I, I kind of wing it a little bit and sometimes that makes it a little harder to teach. But it's good, I think it's good to show you that I don't come up with the with exactly what I want instantly. There's a lot of back and forth. So I'll add white to the sun, then I add yellow. I think later on I add white again. It's just kind of like to get that sweet spot where it looks and it looks like a place where it's happy for you. So that's you'll see that a lot, me going kind of back and forth. That's normal. All of us artists do that. So then, then I added white to the reflection. You'll see now that my water's starting to brighten a little bit because you need a little brightness in the water. So I'm just adding different yellows and oranges and whites till I'm happy. I'm just playing. And that's, that's what I really want you to learn, especially from this sky and water. It's, 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 there's a lot of just playing until you just think you fall in love with what you see. All right, so now we have more of a yellow sunset. I'm gonna add in more whites, I can guarantee. But I'm playing. I'm adding a little more yellow in the sky, kind of yellows and oranges in the sky to kind of work it in that sun. Now, now I'm adding a little more blue because I've lost the blue in the lower part of the sky. And again, you have to be a little careful not to put it right on top of yellow. 
you get very used to that if you paint any length of time. <laughs> now I'm painting, now I'm finger painting. I went back to kindergarten. And I want you to notice in the video, I did go over where my son was supposed to be. So now I'm putting some orange around to correct that because I don't do it right always either. And I also added a little more orange in front of the sun and then I'm blending with my finger because I can. So now the sun is becoming a little more subtle, but then those whites in the sun will really pop. Now, I almost want to pause the video, but I can't. The palette knife, to add those final highlights with white, and they almost look like white caps, it's brilliant. The palette knife makes it so easy. You just put the paint on the part, part of the palette knife furthest from your face, on the underside, you kind of pull the paint towards you in the palette and then you can just set it down. And it just looks glorious. Oh, we have to paint our boat now. So I made it intentionally a very, very basic, very simple boat. I didn't put any people in the boat. Um, I've already heard people about that going, but there's nobody in the boat steering. And that's true. There's nobody hoisting the sails and doing all that shit in the boat. But it's okay. So if you want to use ruler, as I'm just using, to kind of get that top edge of the boat, or even the bottom edge, I didn't bother, but you can if you want. Using a ruler just helps. Um, you don't want to set your ruler right down in like wet paint. You, you will want to use a blow dryer first or wait for a few moments. And by the way, um, it's not crucial that your water is 100% dry before you paint your boat on, but it helps, it kind of helps a little. Otherwise your boat will get lighter and will get more grays because it'll pull some of the colors from behind and that will lighten the black a little bit. So, but most of you, your, your ocean should probably be dry. There I am using a ruler. And you, that's one way to use a ruler, to kind of paint alongside the ruler with baby bear brush. And then from there, you can design your, your sail. Because you want, like the sail is on one side of the sail, there's this rod, there's this pole. So that side of the sail needs to be perfectly straight. The other side doesn't have to be anything. So you can kind of like the, the, the material can flow or ebb and flow. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it and just kind of getting the basic shape and then filling it in with black. I know there's a light that I'm using on top of my painting. Wet paint reflects light terribly. So even though that looks orange on the top part of the sail, it's actually black, but you can't tell because my light's shining on it and making it look really orangey. So I'm busy filling in the sail with black, with baby bear. You could switch brushes at that point and use a larger brush to make it a little quicker to fill in the sail. I didn't bother. It's basically, I'm a lazy painter. I do. If something's in my hand, I just use that. <laughs> you know, so much for right tool for the right job, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> now for the other sail, I wanted to give you a different way of, of using a ruler. I'm painting all along the edge of a ruler. It's an old ruler. I don't care if I get paint on it. And then once you get a bunch of back paint on the edge of your ruler and you just set it down really gently and pull it right back off and it gives you the perfect straight line. And that's not, doesn't make it done for you, but it gives you a guide to make that sail, the next sail very straight on the edge. Now, if you're a sailor and you've sailed in sailboats and you're thinking, why is there two sail mat, sail rods or whatever they call it? <laughs> you can tell I'm not a sailor. I don't know if this is accurate nautically. I'm not a sailor, I'm an artist. Hmm. So, you know, if you wanna criticize or, you know, tell me I'm not doing the boat totally correctly, go for it. It's all good. <laughs> Us artists take like artistic license with a lot of things. So one of them is this sailboat.
All right. So a basic sailboat is now done. Good for you. I hope you're painting along. So when we are doing shadows in water, the trick is to make it, them a little bit transparent. So I mix a lot more water in with my black. You don't want to mix so much water in with the black that it drips. It doesn't want, you don't want it to drip down your canvas, but you want it to be a little bit watery because that makes it more transparent. And I didn't like exactly make the exact shape of the boat uh, for the shadow, for the reflection, I should say. Um, but I basically kind of made ish the shadow going downwards into the right. But I always use horizontal strokes because I'm painting in water, remember? So now we're using a blow dryer really quick because you don't want to get that black anywhere else. Now, be, the reason I dried it is because I wanted to pull some of the other colors from the lake kind of horizontally through the shadow to make the little ripples that you see that hit that catch the light, even though even in the shadows. <clears throat> so now I'm adding a little white at the front of the boat and a little bit behind. I used my finger. So I'm using my knife now to create some white sort of white caps or glints on the water. Again, horizontally. That's, I think, why I like the length so well for water because it gives it's so easy to make a horizontal line with a knife. You just like, go like that. Easy peasy. And now I'm putting a little purple in the reflection, even in the shadow. And because there's black underneath, the black will kind of shine through a little bit. There's a lot of layering that happens when you paint with acrylics. That's partly because they dry so fast that you can't blend things. So that's another reason why there's a back and forth. So you can put down, you'll notice now I'm putting more blacks, more darks in the shadow because I'm not, not enough black kind of showed through under the other colors. But I just play and go kind of back and forth and back and forth until I get the perfect balance of what looks like a great balance between the shadow darks, but not so dark that it looks like another boat underneath, but upside down. <laughs> That's what you don't want. A lot of new artists will paint the boat, but in reverse underneath on the water in just black. And they think that's a great shadow. It's not really. <laughs> All right, so now, because I, the boat looks very lifeless if it's one shade of black and no highlights whatsoever. So now I'm adding a little blue, light blue, sort of in the boat. I know it's a silhouette. So technically, if you don't want to do this stuff, you don't have to, but just to give it a little more dimension, a little more life, I wanted to make a little more blues just on the side of the boat, the left side of the boat and the left side of the sails. Just, and on the top of the boat, edge edge of the boat as well. And now I'm adding a little more black because my black got kind of faded and kind of too light. Sometimes black needs a couple layers to really get that drastic. I want drama. I want dark darks, dark blacks in that boat, but I also want a few little highlights and that's all good. Hmm. It makes me want to go sailing again. I don't know about you, but now I'm using the palette knife on the, just on the edges, just to get a really dramatic highlight. Just a, like it, the light just glints. Now, highlights are fun because if you overdo them, it doesn't matter because you can always cover them ones up in black, back in black, like I'm doing right now with the knife. Just if you overdo it, it's easy to correct it. So if you overdo your highlights, you do more black. If you overdo your black, you can do more highlights. You can go back and forth until you're happy. So that's the nice thing about acrylic. You can always do that. I'm even putting some darks, darker darks in the water, just for fun, just for drama. Now I'm signing my initials. I have this LG sign that I make 
in the uh, in my on the corners of my paintings. Lisa Gollum's algae, <laughs> and that's it. So, I did not wear a feather boa today, and I know you're so so disappointed. But no matter whether I wear a feather boa or not, I am still a little bit crazy on the inside, a little cray cray. So I just thought when I'm just commenting on the video of myself painting, I really didn't need to wear the feather boa. But if you really miss it, um, just check out probably my next tutorial and I bet you anything I'll be wearing it again. Um, so peace and love to all of you and um i love you and i love that you're hanging out with me and i just hope that you're having a great day peace out love you guys bye thanks so much for hanging out with me in my studio feel free to connect with me in the comments or check out my social media sites below and if you enjoyed this tutorial show those like and subscribe buttons some love See you next Tuesday.